Um, so anyway, nobody in the room's job is harder than five, beating the top five Go players. Well, guess what? Google beat them with AI. Mm -hmm. And we beat Kasparov, whatever, a decade ago. And we're beating poker players and the best poker players in the world. AI, when focused on one vertical, will win. And it's just a matter of time before they focus on accounting, legal. I've seen six or seven startups focus specifically on contracts and legal. Mm -hmm. So I think half the legal work is going to be done by machine learning in another 10 years. And how many people here know people who got their law degrees and couldn't find a great job? We all know somebody like that, right? Or you're, the, you're that person, right? Yeah. You, you suffer through it. <laughs> but it's true. So what do we think is going to happen next 10 years? OK, now let's add to it the fact that uh, 30 million people in this country work in retail or driving a car. McDonald's just put in self-serve kiosks, Itza, self-serve kiosks, Panera Bread, self-serve kiosks. Anybody here think that the idea that a person hitting buttons and collecting money at a register is going to be a job that exists in 10 or 15 years? OK, so we're all fucked. <laughs> this is a very dark, dark, view of the world. Not only are the 30 million retail and driving jobs going to, let's say 80% of them go away, mm -hmm. half of them go away. We're going to have 15 million Americans, 5% of the country, and essentially 10% of adults are going to be out of work already compared to how many people are out of work. Mm -hmm. And white collar jobs are going to start going. Right. OK. So how are we all going to survive? Where, are the, where is the opportunity to move from poor to middle class or poor to wealthy or middle class to wealthy or wealthy to ultra wealthy? Well, you don't have to worry about wealthy to ultra wealthy because the entire system in America is rigged for the wealthy to become ultra wealthy. Capital gains tax, LLCs, Donald Trump is president. I mean, it's just a disaster. <laughs> it, I mean, listen, it's the biggest disaster in the world. I was discussing it with my wife and I was like, oh my God. Wait, do you realize how little in taxes we're going to be paying? This is horrible. Like, I'm, we're going to save a lot of money, mm -hmm. and then there's going to be a lot of pain and suffering, and people can't go to the doctor, and people, we're going to get rid of preschool. I mean, we're getting rid of so many important things. It's disgusting. It's horrible. And it's at the exact time when all of these, you know, AI jobs and automation are going to be happening, which is a very crazy time. Mm -hmm. I believe that the hack that will get people into the ability to move from poor to rich, from middle class to rich, and to have bounty in life is to be on the cap table of high growth startups. Right. I believe in my heart that if you had $100,000 to invest, doing it in, or some percentage of it in high growth startups would be worth doing it. Because let's say you put five or 10% of your net worth into this, and you lose it, or you right. lose half of it. If you lose all of it, you lose five or 10% of your worth, and if that's, let's say, $100,000, if you had a million dollars in savings, and you lost 100,000, 10% of it, you wouldn't be destitute. You'd be bummed, but you wouldn't be destitute. Yeah. And you will have invested in 30 companies, mm -hmm. 25 or 30 companies, and you'll learn something and you'll have networked. If you lose half of it, you'll be networked, you'll be you know, bummed, but not super bummed. But what if you hit Uber or Airbnb or Google or Facebook or even a 100Xer, and all of a sudden, you, know, you 10X your money? Right. Now you've doubled your net worth, and now you're starting to have escape velocity. And one very interesting thing has happened. Non-accredited investing, which is 96% of the country, uh, just got passed, right? Mm -hmm. So we see Republic and Seed Invest are doing non-accredited investor uh, fundraising. I think this is going to change the world. Mm -hmm. And everybody's saying it's not, and it's going to be like the worst companies. And it may be the worst companies right now, or it may be the companies where it's the funding of last right. resort in some cases. I don't think it's all cases. But this is the same thing people told me when I started my syndicate on AngelList. Right. I moved it to Jason's syndicate now, um, which is no dig to AngelList. I just <laughs> wanted all the carry for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't need that platform. We have so much reach. Um, but I really believe in syndicating my best deal flow to everybody. Right. So I really hope that the founders I work with will consider emailing their entire list of customers and their friends and family and saying, hey, we're going to put a million dollars available to the public in the next Uber, Thumbtack, Robinhood, Desktop Metal, Data Stacks, or Wealthfront. Right. I would love to see those companies, when they're raising their first $10 million, mm -hmm. allocate $2 million of it to the public at $100 to $500. How many people here knew 
in the first year of using Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Uber, or Airbnb that these would be significant companies? How many people knew those would be significant companies? Raise your hand if you thought, this is a pretty cool company. It's like maybe 25% of the audience knew those were gonna be significant companies. In year two, how many people knew in year two of LinkedIn or Uber, Airbnb or Facebook that they would be significant companies? Raise your hand nice and high. So now we're up at half. Okay, those companies went public in year five, six, or seven. Yeah. So in the first two years, half the audience would have made a bet on one of those. Mm -hmm. My mom knew that Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn were gonna be great companies. She's, she's into it, but I mean, she's not like here every day. She's in Brooklyn. Why can't Americans invest in these companies early on? Well, it was because of some antiquated legislation that the SEC has now changed. And we're going to see one of these companies will be brave enough to do it, some founder will be brave enough to do it with a high quality company with serious revenue. And we might see, you know, a thousand Americans put a thousand dollars in each. And I'm talking about teachers and garbage men and firefighters and just, you know, salt of the earth, blue collar people put a thousand dollars into a company or five dollars a company and have it go a thousand X. Right. And get back a half million or a million dollars and be able to buy a house again, mm -hmm. right? And it comes full circle. That that's way. why I wrote the book. Honestly, mm -hmm. I think I didn't have to write the book. It was an opportunity cost for me to write it. I could have been investing in startups during that time. But I just thought, you know, I figured something out. Mm -hmm. And it's, although life is a zero sum game in many ways, angel investing happens to be one unique place where collaboration is critical mm -hmm. and virtuous. I've never met a startup that didn't have a dozen investors in the first couple of years. Right. And typically they have two or three dozen on the cap table by year three. Mm -hmm. It is a collaborative sport. Even myself, Chris Saka, Cyan Bannister, we don't have the ability, nor do we want to be the entire round. Mm -hmm. We want to have multiple investors involved right. because multiple people bring more skills to the table. And that's what we're going for. So with the book, I'm just hoping to inspire some number of people and help them get rich, help them move from the middle class to the upper class. I'm not worried about wealthy to ultra wealthy, that's gonna happen. I mean, if you just put your money in the stock market mm -hmm. and you can't collect capital gains and dividends, you'll be fine. Yeah. We have a real problem in America right now of going from poor to middle class right. and from middle class to wealthy. It was really good for a couple of generations, but then we decided to add capital gains mm -hmm. and a bunch of, you know, lower the tax rate for the ultra wealthy while claiming that the ultra wealthy are paying more in taxes, they're paying more in a total dollar amount, they're paying less than they ever had. Right. So it's all a lie. And Trump is continuing that lie to an absurd basis. I mean, he's telling everybody that his health care is gonna be better, it's a bold faced lie. Mm -hmm. He's telling everybody he's gonna reduce the budget, he's gonna spend more, and he's giving people huge tax breaks who don't want or need it. Right. People who are affluent in this country are scared to death right now of a coming revolution right. based upon the polarization of wealth. Mm -hmm. It's too easy on the wealthy in this country. They're not doing their fair share. And that's why they're all taking the giving pledge mm -hmm. because they're scared to death that this is gonna turn into Marie Antoinette. I mean, they're gonna be right. coming with the guillotines for the rich. Right. Operation Wall Street was an example, it was kind of like the dry run mm -hmm. of how upset people are at the polarization of wealth in this country. Mm -hmm. It is completely unfair that we're fighting against a basic minimum wage while at the same time giving tax cuts. And we're so rich, this country is so rich, we have so much money, and we can't provide health care for everybody. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Tiny countries with less resources than us are doing it, and we can't, for what reason? because of some political battle. I mean, these are human beings who are suffering mm -hmm. and we want to take away childcare. We want to, I mean, it's unconscionable what's happening in the country right now. Right. Um, and I feel like, listen, you know, the system is rigged and I'm a kid from Brooklyn. Mom's a nurse. Dad was a bartender who owned a bar. They lost all their money when I was 17. I had to fend for myself since then. Mm -hmm. I figured it out. I got lucky. I hacked my way to some success. I got lucky seven or eight times. Um, and I wanted to share a little bit of that story of how I did it. Right. And I hope other people read it, mm -hmm. deploy it, and become wealthy. That is sincerely and truly my goal. I don't need to sell books.